Did you know that classical music helps you retain information? So for the sake of this video, Oh man, did you catch that? What's the problem with this section? One of the most obvious things people can notice if you do it really bad is the color grade. And one thing you definitely don't wanna do is blind the viewer as soon as they click on the video. And yes, I know sometimes this has a lot to do with the actual camera settings, but it can also be caused in the editing and not knowing how to color grade in general. So most of the time in whatever you're using to edit, you can bring up a chart that shows the waveforms. And a good rule of thumb is to have the highlights near 100 and the shadows at zero. The only time that would be somewhat acceptable to have bright flashes and everything like that is if you're adding transitions, but also be mindful of not adding <sighs> useless transitions. Man, adding unnecessary transitions is perfect to one, take away from the initial video, and two, annoying the person watching so much that they end up getting a headache, which results in them never wanting to watch your video ever again. Because, well, I mean, why would you, why would you want to force a headache on yourself by just seeing a bunch of transitions that have no place being there? and you just get a headache. For me personally, I like to keep the transitions clean, whether it's a mask transition or a simple swipe when necessary. Now, don't get me wrong, if the video or the section that you're working on has a specific style that you've implemented yourself into the overall video, then by all means, use whatever style transition you need to. The part that gets annoying is adding transitions that have nothing to do with what is in the video, the style, and a bunch of crazy things going on. Try your best to make sure there's a purpose behind everything you're adding in an edit, all the way from the grade to the music. And if your music is too loud, then <clears throat> All right, let me try that again. If your music is too loud, Okay, no music. Make sure you're not having the music overlap the person that's talking so much in a way that the person viewing it is trying to read their lips to understand what's going on. A good rule of thumb that can vary, of course, but in general, at minus 18 to 20 decibels is a good area to start. Of course, you need to hear it out to determine that yourself. The next thing I want to talk about is, see what happened there? You have the power of editing, which means this should be a no brainer, but it still happens sometimes. Do your best to make sure the cuts are as comfortable and natural as possible. Unless of course it's for comedic effect, then that works too. And to help make it more comfortable and natural, you can add J cuts or L cuts. There's a bunch of different types of cuts out there, but those are the main two that can make it flow really nice. If you want a quick lesson on what those are, a J cut is whenever the audio starts before cutting, and an L cut is whenever the audio continues to the other clip that you cut to. So this is a J cut, and this is an L cut. So now you know what those are. The viewer should have a comfortable time watching the video without feeling like there's something off. And of course, the majority of editing is all about cutting and knowing that there was a purpose in how you're trying to tell the story and structure it out in the way it's supposed to be. Because everything that I just mentioned won't even matter if the viewer doesn't even want to watch that long to catch those issues. And that all has to do with bad structure. If you are editing a video that the client hasn't specifically told you, footage should be all over the place, out of order, B-roll shouldn't even match up with whatever you're putting on screen, then it needs to have some kind of structure to it. You know how people say the foundation of whatever you do is the most important because no matter what you build on top of it, if the foundation is weak, it'll all fall. The same goes for creating a project. Talk with the client, come up with a plan and how you wanna structure out the video. And if done right, the viewing experience will be 
significantly different. The reason why I'm even mentioning all these things is because I've done them as well. We all start somewhere and I took advice and I just wanna pass it along in case you're doing some of these things and you don't even notice. So by me saying all this stuff, I'm pretty much just roasting my older self. I mean, at the start of this video, I showed you a clip of an edit I did a long, long time ago. And that's all I'm going to show you because I, I mean, that's enough embarrassment for today. That's all I have to say this time around. Now, if you want to know some secret editing tools that you might not know, I mean, I didn't know them for a long time. Here, actually, let me move this over here. All right. You can click up here, check that out. I'll mention all of it. And I'll see you with the next edit.